cheat us out of eight minutes. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, beautiful day in September. It is eight, uh, September 18th, 2024. We're going to start this City Council India Water Authority joint meeting for the City Council by calling to order in a roll call by our City Clerk. Council Member Tees? Present. Council Member Furman? Present. Council Member Holmes? Present. Mayor Proton Miller? Present. And Mayor Ramos Amit? Present. Thank you, Sabi. Next item on our agenda is the invocation we have with us this evening from Garden Fellowship. Pastor Bros Bates, thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening. Let's all bow our heads as we enter into a time of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord God, we come before you right now and we just ask that your presence would be in this council tonight. Father, that you would direct the proceedings and you would preside over this meeting. Father, we want what happens for the city of Indio here to glorify you, to unify us as one people, one body, Lord, and to lift up the members of this community. Father, we pray for wisdom for all the council members. We pray for a spirit of unity to be here tonight and that the things that you want to have happen would take place here, that you would give everyone the conviction and the determination to follow in the things that you've laid on their hearts and the unity to concede to one another when necessary. Father, we lift this time up to you now. We thank you, Father, that your word says that many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord directs his steps. Father, we want our steps to be in line with your plans. Just pray that would be what takes place here this evening as we lift it up in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bates. Joining us this evening for the Pledge of Allegiance, we have a special guest. His name is Grayson Franco, and he is a third grader at Roosevelt Elementary. Grayson is a standout student at Roosevelt Elementary, with science being his favorite. Good job. Mm -hmm. In his free time, he enjoys playing soccer, and when he grows up, he dreams of becoming an architectural designer. Wow! To follow in his dad's footsteps. Thank you for being here with us, Grayson. We are mm. ready when you are. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Great job. We have a little we have a little present for you, Grayson. We want to thank you for coming and being with us this evening, and we hope you tell all your friends how much fun it was. Because <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you. And mommy and daddy can either stay here or they can take you home. Okay, soccer time. <laughs> have fun. Okay, our next item on the agenda is the Youth Advisory Council. Would you like to introduce your new team? Yes. Good evening, City Council members. My name is Bianca Tariquez, and I am this year's Youth Advisory Council Mayor. We are so excited to start a new year and already have many ideas. I would like to take this Because you did a great job. Thank you. And Mommy and Daddy can either stay with here Advisory or they can Council. take you home. As mentioned before, my oh, okay. name is Bianca Tariquez, and I'm a senior at Xavier College Preparatory High School. And a fun fact about me is that I stress bake. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have our Yak Mayor Pro Tem, Aiden Chavez. He is a senior attending India High School. And a fun fact about him is that he participates in 23 extracurricular activities. Wow. Next is our Yak Treasurer, Isabella Duarte, who is a junior also attending India High School. And a fun fact about Isabella is that she loves to travel. Next, we have our YAC secretary, Savannah Vela, who is a senior at Shadow Hills High School and is editor-in-chief for the school newspaper. Right. Following is YAC publicist, Lila Valentine. She's also a sophomore at 
Palm Dumpster High School. And my last fun fact is that she hopes to become city manager when she's older. Next we have Kay Kaylee Cisneros, who is a senior at Indio High School, and she plays flag football. Nice. Following, we have Jalissa Cornejo, who is a junior at Shadow Hills High School. And a fun fact about Jalissa is that she loves to listen to music. Next is Yaretzi Magania, who is a sophomore at Shadow Hills High School. And her fun fact is that she loves to play guitar in her free time. <laughs> We also have Ari Orantes, who is a sophomore at Shadow Hills High School, and her fun fact is that her favorite fruit is raspberries. Next is Danica Rodriguez, who is in the ninth grade at Indio High School, and a fun fact about Danica is that she loves corgis. <laughs> Finally, we have Viviana Tariquez, who attends Xavier College Preparatory High School and is in the 11th grade. Her fun fact is that she participates on her school's wrestling team. <laughs> also new to the team is our Youth Advisory Council co-advisor, Mia Bella Cancino, who is a recent graduate of Indio High School and was in YAC for four years and is now returning to help with the group. Yay. We look forward to working with the City Council to make Indio the best it can be. That, thank you, and that concludes my report. Wonderful. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. We look forward to seeing you regularly and hearing all about all the exciting things you're going to be doing in the community. Thank you, Mayor, for the report. Our next item on the agenda is City Manager Reports and Information. Thank you, Mayor. We welcome uh, Lieutenant Haynes here today. As Chief Tolley is at some training. Appreciate him filling in. And the long-awaited arrival of our Assistant City Manager, Jonathan H uh, Nix. So we certainly welcome John. He's already jumped in, and we're looking forward to some great work and great service uh, from him. And I'm sure you'll touch on it, uh, Mayor, and the rest of you, but we have the State of the City coming up on October 1st at the fairgrounds, and invite all to participate on our website. You can gain access to tickets and, and get to hear all the wonderful things going on in the city. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, item number six, City Council Conflict of Interest Disclosure. City Attorney, do I need to do anything with that? Uh, this will be a time to announce any potential conflicts the council has on the items on the agenda. The city attorney is not aware of any conflicts. Thank you. I hear none from the council, so we will move on to item number seven, report on city council external internal boards, commissions, and committee meetings, and report on meetings attended per government code section 53232.3D. And I'm going to start with you. <laughs> start with me. I've never done that before. Okay. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just uh, all my committees were dark, but did have a couple of events I was uh, honored to represent the city on. We had two Jersey Mike ribbon cuttings. Thank you to our staff. They're doing an excellent job of, of hosting these uh, new businesses and making them feel like they're a part of the Indio family. So we had two Jersey Mikes over the last uh, month that uh, joined one on uh, North Indio over by Handel's Ice Cream, the other one over by uh, Ralph's there in uh off of 50th and Jefferson. So if you get a chance, go in there and say hello and uh, continue to support the businesses here in Indio. Uh, the Mayor's Cup, I want to congratulate Shadow Hills for their win every time. 33 to 8. They've won every Mayor's Cup since we started. So years? we've got to get a little bit faster, guys, I guess, from Indio into high. Indio High there. Oh, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's always <laughs> great to see. I didn't get a chance to go to the game, but I watched it. You know, they had a bunch of it, and it really exciting to see the rivalry between the two high schools <laughs> and, and the families coming out. So it's always great. That's what it's about. And then um, the uh, California Special Districts uh, Association honored Josh Bonner. He used to be head of our Chamber of Commerce, and I was able to represent the city of Indio by giving him a proclamation here in Indian Wells, thanking him for being the general manager of the year for the special districts for all of California. And if you don't know Josh, he's now the head of the general manager of the cemetery district out by the Coachella and uh, Indio border there. So congratulations to him and other Indio residents. It's doing great work. And then lastly, um, I want to thank the mayor for the mayor's cup, our mayor's uh, and tribal chairman's uh, luncheon. Uh, she did a great job representing the city of Indio at that event, and, and it was great to hear all the things going on in the cities uh, around us and the, the tribes. So great job, Mayor, on that 
And then lastly, on the 9-11 ceremonies, I uh, want to honor all those uh, that we were able to. Uh, it was at a couple of, of events. To, we should always remember the those that lost their lives. And, you know, we had a few of our own uh, here locally lose their lives during that, some of that conflict. So if we could continue to support our soldiers, first responders, and all those who put themselves in harm way, that would be appreciated. But honored to go to some of the 9-11 ceremonies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Holmes? Well, you're just going and changing it all up with the, with the order here. Okay, uh, just a couple of things going on. I, I too attended the two Jersey Mikes mostly because I wanted their sandwiches. They're really, really good. So you have no excuse now. North India or, or there off of Jefferson and 50th, they're really good. And there's a great, there's just the people there are fun, really, really fun. So let's, um, as uh, council member, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem, so sorry. Uh, mentioned we just need to support summertime's really really tough on all of our small businesses and so I ask for everyone's uh, support for the next month or so and just uh, going to all the restaurants as much as you can and supporting them uh, let's see a couple of things CV Mountains Conservancy that was a super short meeting um, we finally have our arms wrapped around um, the, the issue with the fencing in La Quinta um, it, it, it's, you know, we still have some animals that are, are out into the yards, but because of the heat, they didn't want them, uh, they didn't want to move them back behind the fences. So it's, it's just interesting to, to be a part of all the, all the sensitivity there is to, to our lands and to the animals that preside on our lands. It's been an interesting experience, but we're getting our arms wrapped around that. That was the only item of note from that. Um, let's see. We so I ask for everyone's uh, support for the next month or so, and just uh, uh, going to all the restaurants as much as you can. Uh, is notable and regarding them. The construction uh, of the uh, let's CV see, a couple of things. It is, it is mostly CV Mountains Conservancy. That was a super it's short meeting. Um, we finished. finally have our arms wrapped uh, around. So that's really very, very um, exciting. The, the issue with the fencing and some of the impact. We still have some animals that are out in the yards, but because of the heat, they didn't want them. There's a couple of lights in Jackson that are really kind of cool that you see at night and there's a little bit more to come regarding arts and music line the project status update on that one uh, that's that's we are working on that that is going to happen um, the environmental approval has been completed we're in the process of the right away uh, acquisition um, and and now we're looking at construction and here's something crazy I mean we all know that things and costs are going through the roof what started out as something around $48 million is now ballooned to $65 million. I mean, these numbers are huge to me. Um, the good news is that the funding is there. If everybody remembers CVAG obtained a $46 million ATP grant last year, and then the additional funds are being made available, 75% uh, local funding. Um, and then the agencies, the three agencies, uh, put in the additional 25%. So it's really going to happen. It's going to be a, move, a boon to the to the city, and particularly to that area, not just during the concerts, but it's going to be kind of cool because you get to ride your bike down there, and then there are going to be lanes um, from, from I want to call it motor traffic, but it's really the golf carts. Uh, now the fun part, um, The uh, how many people are interested in the Monroe Interchange? I, I think half the world is because it is it impacts all of us and it is a challenge and and we are we are moving the reason this was on the interstate or on the uh, on the the commission meeting it had to do with funding and gosh this goes through a whole lot of detail and I'll see if I can just uh, make it just short and sweet essentially we have 14 million dollars that we're going to to get on this um, uh, let me just read you this it's we were authorized to concern to confirm RCTC that all available LPP funding is what they call it is allocated to the Monroe interchange and and so the detail that I have here for everyone Sorry about that um, We we know that the environmental document the final documents been approved by Caltrans and Construction cost estimate has been updated after the addition of, of um, cycle track low-speed electric vehicle path um, as part of that right-of-way acquisition is underway environmental permitting has begun Funding status is detailed, and it's a separate staff report that I just read you. Here's the good news. Here's the bottom line. Construction begins fall of 2025. Yay. Let's keep our fingers crossed we can meet that date. We all need um, some relief, especially with the growth there in North Indio. 
Um, let's see, what else did I have? You know, so the first movie, for those of you that missed, it was Cars. It was kind of cool. It was kind of hot at night, but it was just fun to sit there and watch all the families sitting on the grass watching watching this fun kid movie that, I mean, that even as an adult I enjoyed. It, it was just fun watching everybody. And we gave out parking, and I'm going to um, echo what you said, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you to staff. You're doing a fabulous job everywhere throughout the city and marketing the city and showing the city off and being creative and inventive. Um, a wonderful job. Thank you so very, very much. And then, uh, let's see, second Saturday, of course. That was awesome. I wanted to talk to my, my friends here, my team. You know, the more I'm out in this world talking to people in, in our city, the challenge of, of, of housing that, you know, people can get into, whether it's a first-time home buyer or, or, or a house that is reasonably priced for any average Indio person can, can purchase is, is, it's just not even possible. It's, it's a challenge. And I, I just see, I see so many frustrated people that are working hard, saving their money, and they still can't find a way to buy um, a house. And, and I'd like to look into that a little bit further. I think maybe we can work for Habitat, uh, with Habitat for Humanity, but that's maybe a couple of houses. I think there may be some options, and I'd, I'd like to see if, if staff has um, any ideas to, to help in some form or fashion um, help our residents. That's okay with you guys? Please jump in as far as I'm concerned. Uh, one thing that I'd like to add, that I know Coachella is currently working on an anti-displacement ordinance, which is going to focus on that, right? How do you make sure your current residents don't lose their homes as prices are incre mm -hmm. increasing? So. Uh, maybe one of my suggestions would be to look at that ordinance when it when it does um, become available through the city of Coachella and see if there's anything that we can implement that would work for our community as well. I think we should take a look at, at everything we can. Uh, Mayor, just quickly, we do have an opportunity that appears on the vein that perhaps both of you are speaking to and similar to the county program is a first-time home buyer opportunity. So that's one that could be at our fingertips if the council is interested in us diving into that, uh, but it would be funding from the state. We could supplement it, but it's funding from the state to assist some people to get into their homes. Yes, we've had yeah. similar programs in the past, so maybe it's time to bring forward whatever the current opportunities are and we can see what we can do. Mm -hmm. That's okay with everyone? Yes, yes please. All right, does that conclude your report? Council yes, Member? it does. Thank you Thank so much, you. Mayor. Council Member Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this past week, I met with the ex-city manager of Lancaster, who is now running their solar energy program and is looking into large hydrogen uh, production projects. So we talked about you know, our, our common interest in renewable energy, and so we're going to have them meet up with Sunline and see if there's anything that we can work together on uh, between Lancaster and the Coachella Valley. I also had a meeting with the CVAG Energy and Sustainability uh, Commission. Uh, we had a presentation from IID talking about their K-Line, which they're improving with $38 million. It's a 28-mile transmission line uh, coming from Imperial towards the Coachella Valley. We also talked about air quality. The Air Quality Management District was there. The EPA was there. And CARB was also um, online. There was some miscommunication last year. After Hurricane Hillary, our air quality district was saying that our uh, air quality was normal. And we were clearly seeing here more dust in our air. And so we wanted to make sure that we got down to well, why the data wasn't showing what we were seeing. Uh, one of the theories from the Air Quality District is that it could be potentially larger particles than what we currently measure. Right now we measure two point, PM 2.5 and PM 10 because those can do a lot of damage. 2.5 can get into your cardiovascular system and PM 10 can still get into your lungs. But particles larger than that, you know, they're not tracking, but they could still have an impact, especially in large quantities when people are exposed over and over. So we want to get some more details on that and see if we can get some more um, data on those particles as well. Uh, we did get them to, to commit to helping us when we do go out to look for funding to mitigate these dust issues. We were concerned that if the data is not showing it, then maybe the EPA or, you know, the state agencies are going to say, well, you don't have a problem because the data doesn't show it. And so we get, did get them to verbally commit to still assist us, even if the data is not showing it, to go and look for these uh, funds to help in these mitigation um, efforts. And I also, during that meeting, requested a presentation from Lancaster and Sunline regarding solar power and hydrogen so we can have the whole valley kind of see the two, uh, how the two 
areas are moving forward in renewable energy. I recently had a, an interview with Univision. Uh, they came to talk to us about our water conservation efforts with our turf removal um, rebates through Indio Water Authority. And so we were able to get out some information on the new program that gives you an extra dollar, so three dollars per square foot when you're including native planting uh, within your garden. Uh, today I also started a six-week course through Arizona State University, uh, the Laboratory for Energy and Power Solutions, and a the Center for Strategic Policy Innovations. We'll be looking at microgrid technologies and how to calculate costs and efficiencies for these types of projects. Uh, right now we currently have pockets of Indio, which we don't foresee having power for several years, so I'm looking to learn more about how developers might be able to use some of these new renewable energy projects uh, going into the near, uh, to see if we can get some of these projects going uh, faster, sooner than later. I also attended the mayor's luncheon last Friday. We got to hear from cities across the valley about their plans for the future. It was really great to hear a true uh, spirit of collaboration between our cities and um, seeing how everybody's thinking about some of these issues in, on the regional level as far as energy needs, uh, climate resilience, economic development, air quality, and water conservation. Also, I uh, have been getting some really good feedback on our movie nights, so I also wanted to thank staff for that. Seems like the community is really loving those new events that are coming up downtown, so really appreciate that and look forward to having our farmer's market back up and going, movie nights, second Saturdays, and then our food truck Fridays <laughs> as well. <laughs> so oh great job to our staff. When are we going to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Ortiz. Council Member Furman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. Um, I attended a lot of the events that you heard, so I'll apply through those and then I'll give an update on the meeting I had today. Um, I also attended uh, both Jersey Mike's uh, uh, ribbon cut-ins. I live close to the one on Avenue 42, so I've been there a few times already. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, I also attended the Mayor's Cup. India will be back next year. and <laughs> But no, it's always good to uh, go to the games, get to talk to the parents, and actually the students you know sometimes we're out in the community and we don't think that uh, a lot of the students recognize us so they know who we are it gives them opportunity to meet us up, up close and personal but later on they do approach you and they have questions and concerns about the community so it's just another advice for us to interact with the youth and make ourselves available so it was a, actually a good night i also attended the movie night cars which was fun i i just was actually driving by i wanted to see the crowd but then i got curious and i, I got out and got to talk to some folks and got some free popcorn and you know so it's a, a great event and hats off to staff once again our staff is incredibly busy and um, they're at every event and they're working hard to make sure our community has a great time and for the folks who are listening the next one is october 9th and uh it's uh, american favorite the movie grease so uh i know it's going to be packed um, i'm already hearing folks ready to come so 6 p.m car show Correct, Miguel, 6 p.m. Um, there's cars out there, so uh, we're looking at lowriders, classic cars, and possibly motorcycles. So um, I think that's great. And then the movie starts at 6.30 right here at our center stage. And the weather is getting great, and so it should be a great uh, evening. I also had an opportunity to tour uh, the construction site of Fine Food Bank with Capital Building Services. And so I was extremely excited and uh, proud to see that progress. It is a huge building. It's going to really aid in our community and uh, helping folks get the food uh, that they need. And just looking at this report, I know we'll get get, get more on it. But 265,000 over that were fed in India. I believe that's in one year. I mean, that's it's incredible. It's incredible, especially um, in times when we're talking about housing and utilities being high and things of those nature. So when we know that. We have folks who are food insecure in our community, and uh, we have organizations like Fire Food Bank that we support. Um, hats off to them, and I'm looking forward to that being uh, done. Incredible uh, building. And so I also attended a 9-11 memorial at the American Legion, which was great. Uh, a lot of vet veterans there. Um, it was held by, uh, hosted by Rudy uh, Morales and Rocky Galindo and the American Legion. Thank you to them for doing that in our community. And it, it's always great to have the opportunity to honor our veterans and also honor the folks who we lost uh, during that tragic uh, uh, day and after. And so I think that's something that our, our country will continue 
and I, I hope that we continue to memorialize that event um, in the hopes that uh, we prevent it from happening again and, and taking care of those families who are affected by it. So another great event um, in our community. There were a lot that happened, so I know myself and uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, we kind of spread out so we could attend some of these uh, meetings, so it was great. I also attended the All Valley uh, Mayor's County and Tribal Persons Luncheon alongside uh, our city council and our city manager. And of course, um, you know, India was the best city there. Uh, we had the best stuff going on, and so, but very proud of the progress that uh, we're making. You know, you step out right outside, you can see what's going on out there. You can see our downtown, you can see the canopy south of the freeway, our infrastructure projects, our education projects. So there's a lot going on in the city in every corner. and. Um, you know, it's definitely a team effort, and you know, um, we're, we're definitely trending in the right direction. So, congratulations to our mayor uh, for having a great presentation, and, and um, just another great event. And uh, last but not least, um, this morning I had a joint public safety and homelessness committee meeting um, in Palm Desert, and um, the, basically the topic of discussion was the ordinance that the city of India recently passed in August and respects to our encampments in the city and the ruling of the Grant Pass versus Johnson ruling. And for those folks who don't um, know who th what that is, um, time to time you hear me talk about Boise versus Martin. And Boise versus Martin was a law that prevented our um, police or our, um, our city from removing folks from public property, mostly our parks in those areas without having a bed space available, right? And so recently uh, with this new ruling, it overturned that and the governor gave the state order, uh, state agencies, um, Highway Patrol, um, Caltrans, and some of their, their uh, force to start uh, removing some of those uh, encampments. And um, what this law does, it gives you the option of removing them without a bed being available. and we had to really uh, underscore the point that uh, we still approach this from a holistic standpoint. We still work with our partners, whether it's Fine Food Bank, whether it's uh, our nonprofits, our uh, faith-based community, Martha's Village, uh, CVRM to get those services to those folks who need it. Um, but what this is really addressing is the chronically homeless individuals who are reluctant to receive uh, help. And so it's been a concern, you know, for several years in, in our community um, about our parks and public spaces under our bridges, our washes um, with the transient community. And what this does, it allows us to, um, you know, kindly ask them if, you know, we have help for you. But if, if, you, if you don't accept that, we're gonna ask you to move along um, away from our, our public properties. And so that's what uh, the topic of discussion today was whether or not the Coachella Valley wants to have a uniform ordinance um, so we can um, kind of enforce these, these rules um, at the same time. And reason being is um, we don't want Indio to have a quote unquote stricter policy and everybody goes over to La Quinta and La Quinta is not doing that. So we're trying to find out what our best options are. Nonetheless, if we do have a uniform uh, ordinance around the valley um, it's still up to that each uh, jurisdiction to enforce their policies right it just gives our officers and our quality of life team um, a, another tool in their box so to speak and also today we got um, information during the meeting that the county is also looking at a uh, uniform ordinance for the whole county in respects to encampments so um, you know, I think it was a very, very good, robust conversation on how we can start start to address some of our chronically uh, homeless individuals, our, our individuals who have substance abuse issues, who um, have mental health issues. And so um, that was today, and that would conclude my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Furman. When you have that conversation, can you make sure that they take into consideration tribal lands, BIA lands? It seems to be where we have um, a diff more difficult time when we're trying to mitigate some of the encampments. Yeah, we have um, a representative from Torres Martinez who um, is working with the tribal lands because they 
if you remember, we just had a couple years back a big operation where they had to clean up. And what happens is if you don't address it, a lot of folks will congregate a lot of areas, and then it becomes a, a hazardous situation, a health a hazard, and then you have to get more uh, agencies involved. So when that one took place, you needed uh, fire, you needed the police, you needed the nonprofit. So um, we're trying to get in front of these situations. And the ultimate goal is to get people help. And so that's the ultimate goal, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for your reports. My committees were dark as well, and I did have the privilege of speaking at the mayor's panel, but I wanted to really emphasize how it couldn't have happened without the support of staff. Um, I don't know if you believe me, but basically staff gives me a script, and I walk up on the stage, and that's what I do. There's not much more to it. I just show up and read the script. The hard work comes from staff. The hard work comes through the city manager's office, and that's really what excites the community about what's going on in Indio. Um, there might be a solution there for this housing challenge that we have. You know, I did speak to the fact that we've long awaited for the city of Indian Wells to adopt us because they have so much money for housing, and maybe there is a solution there, you know? Set up a housing nonprofit, and they could send us a check, and we could... Uh, have some housing here for people that are struggling that they know they need for their tourism and for all the businesses but um, I think if you know that was the theme of the event it was regionalism and how we all work together and how we have fun doing it it was uh, a very good uh, event and again I want to thank staff for putting together um, all of the comments and the IID video which really highlighted the city of Indio and what's happening here um, also, the state of the city, the same goes holds true there. Um, I'm basically given a date and a time, and I show up with a script, and there I go. But the hard work is all here at City Hall, and it's, I'm sure it's going to be great, and I invite everyone to join us there because we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, there is an event coming up this, e this weekend. It starts Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that is the Flying Doctors. They're going to be out at Desert Mirage. So anyone who needs comprehensive dental, comprehensive vision, chiropractic or um, some other medical services. Uh, they're going to be there all three days. Uh, please drive out there. It is a wonderful event for those who are in need of those services and have challenges um, obtaining them here um, through the regular channels. But um, please, if you know anyone who could use those services, please share with them the information and hopefully they can make it out there. That would conclude my report this evening. So we will move on to item number eight, consent calendar. I've not had any requests to pull any items. So we will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar as is. I'll second that. We have a motion by council member Furman and a second by council member Ortiz. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please indicate your vote electronically. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Wow. We're at the end of the agenda. Where are you going, Layla? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Public hearings. Um, item 9-1, community input for the preparation of the city's consolidated annual performance and evaluation report, FY 2023-2024, 15-day review of CAPER. Mr. David Russell. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. So yes, this evening's presentation is on the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. A uh, short way to say it is the CAPER. How this all ties in for our CDBG program, you're all familiar with our five-year Consolidated Action Plan, which took place from the fiscal year 2019 through 2024. Within that five-year action plan, we have our annual action plans, which is a breakdown of the goals, needs, and objectives to accomplish uh, our five-year goals. And so at the end of each fiscal year, we are tasked with creating and developing our CAPER, which is our goals, essentially, and the results. So do we go out and do what we said what we were going to do with our funds? And fortunately for us, we did. So we did a very good job with that. Um, and this is also ties into our HUD guidelines. We are required to have a 15-day review period. Uh, that allows for public comment and solicitation, any feedback. We document it, and that gets put into our report. 
So the report is a draft that you have on your staff report that will be finalized over the next few days and submitted to HUD. And so this is our public hearing for solicitation. All right, so the funded activities that were approved for the annual action plan, fiscal year 23-24, we had our public infrastructure ADA improvements that is in the Kenner and Jewel neighborhoods. We also have Coachella Valley Rescue Mission, food, uh, Fine Food Bank, we have Martha's Village and Kitchen, Inland Fair Housing and Mediation Board, and Senior Center. And so below them is just a quick brief uh, description of what the services entail. And these are some of the achievements. So for our homeless and emergency shelter services, we were able to provide over 500 uh, individuals shelter services with the help of our uh, public service agencies. Nearly 160 prepared meals were provided to our seniors during non-operational hours uh, through our senior center. And we were able to update and improve 48 ADA ramps, um, improving accessibility to roughly 4,000 individuals in those two neighborhoods in the city. We also had our landlord tenant mediation and housing services. So everything from disputes with homeowners and uh, renters, this includes mobile homes. Uh, we were able to assist 139 residents as part of CDBG funds to provide that service. 1,200 individuals receive food, outreach services, and information. Uh, this in ties into the Fine Food Bank conversation earlier. Uh, they are able to assist with outreach services, uh, reduce price, medical, and preventative programs, really just sharing a lot of resources that the city uh, assists with. And lastly, 35 individuals received shelter services, including case management, wraparound services, uh, all tied into our emergency management shelter services. So a quick recap, uh, we're estimating roughly a little over 6,000 residents have benefited in some way, shape, or form with the use of CDBG funds for this previous fiscal year. Um, and those just quick uh, pieces to that, this includes improved accessibility to our infrastructure, right? Those ADAs allow for more convenience accessibility for our residents. Um, improve access to services, so services they may not have been able to have access to previously or improved on those services. And lastly, new access to services, so services that we might not have necessarily had in previous years, we're able to uh, provide those now. That concludes my presentation. Um, I will hand it back to you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Rasa. Do we have any questions of staff on the presentation? Uh, yeah. Yes. And, you know, th this might be a question for later, but from those 139 residents that we were seeing that are getting help from the mediation mm -hmm. services, do we have any other data about how those calls are going? Like, are they, a are they able to get help? Are they still being evicted? Do we have any other data? Like from results that? as to what we yeah. can find that out. Um, I can go through our uh, documentation that's provided from Inland Fair Housing, and maybe they can break us down with the... Uh, a detailed uh, report of what services were provided, what were the outcomes, yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be interesting yeah. just to go back to what you were speaking to, Ms. Holmes, to see you know what issues we're seeing coming out of specifically our community. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Razo. Thank you. This is a public hearing item, so I will open the public hearing, and I do not have any requests to speak, but. If anyone in the audience would like to comment on this item, there are requests to speak forms in the back of the room. If you would fill one out and turn it into our city clerk, we would be happy to hear from you. Seeing no one step forward, I'll close the public comment period and entertain a motion. Well, I'll okay. make a motion uh, to conduct a public hearing to solicit city council and community input necessary for, for the preparation and submission of the city's consul, uh, consulated annual um, performance and evaluation report caper for fiscal year 2023-24. Mayor, if I may, this is uh, only to receive input. There is no approval. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, it sounds so, sound good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a public hearing, so what are we doing? Uh, so, so we're having a public open. hearing to receive that community input, but we are not approving it at this time. So I'm Correct, yeah, there's no approval necessary. This is really just a breakdown of the results that we've received for the fiscal year and sharing that information with the public. 
and having that platform for comment if needed and available. For 15 days? Correct. And that, okay, so uh, that date started on September 3rd. No, so I, I, would, I would close the public hearing. And if, I think we could have a motion to simply receive and file the comments that we received. In the next 15 days? I'm sorry, the 15 days had already started on September 3rd. Oh, they're over. Yeah. They're over. Today's the last day. Today's the last day. So receive and file, Wayne. Call to receive and file. So I'll make a motion to receive and file. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> and I'll second that. <laughs> that <laughs> okay. We have a motion by Council Member Furman and a second by Council Member Holmes to receive and file. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please indicate your vote electronically. And I will take that vote by roll call, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Ortiz? Yes. Council Member Furman? Yes. Council Member Holmes? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Miller? Aye. And Mayor Ramos Amit? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Now we can get to the last item, number no 10, public comments for items not on the agenda. I have two requests to speak forms this evening, uh, one from Rachel Anderson and Debbie of Five Food Bank. Would you like to come up to the podium? Who would you like to come up first? Um, oh, it's Rachel. on the same. Oh, oh, Rachel, sorry. It's on the same. Oh, you put us together. I know you're Rachel, but I thought it was another Rachel that you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are there from two? Five oh it's been a long day anyways thank you all so much mayor council members city of indio residents thank you so much for having us here um, as you know fine food bank is domiciled here in the city of indio and as council member Council Member Furman has just mentioned, um, we've passed out our statistics um, for this past year. We try to give a state of hunger report to all of the cities and we've been going around to um, pretty much all of the cities now um, over the last three weeks in celebration and in acknowledgement of Hunger Action Month. Um, it's a nationwide uh, event. Many, many cities throughout the United States light up in orange. Um, I know the city of Indio, as well as all of the other cities, are right now going orange um, in order for all of the community to know that we support people that are food insecure and wondering where their next meal is coming from. Um, it's important, I think, very, very important this year to present for the city of Indio um, because of the project that we are doing. People wonder why we had to double the size of our facility, and it's because we want to make sure that we have the ability to serve the community much better than what we ever have before. But that also means that we need to expand because we were running out of space to be able to take in all the fresh fruits and vegetables, um, as well as the other healthy foods that we have brought in. Um, when I came here seven years ago, Fine Food Bank was only distributing about 10 million pounds. We are plus 20 million pounds. And as many people saw during the time of COVID, we were reaching over 30 million pounds in going towards 40 million pounds. We were using seven other facilities in order to be able to house that food, and it was a logistic nightmare. For us now, with the representation of this new building and with the support of Indio, your building services department has been amazing as we've been moving through this project because they understand the breadth and depth and scale of what this means, not just to the city of Indio, but to the entire Coachella Valley and southeastern desert region of California. We are the regional food bank, and from that, we are now creating the food security center and that's right here and something for the city of Indio to be very, very proud of. With that, we will be able to have the capacity to go up to approximately 40 million pounds of food. So we are set for whenever there is disaster. We are the USDA commodities distributor for this area. And so when there is a disaster recognized by the state of California, the county, as well as the federal government, we will be the ones that's housing the disaster supplies, um, earthquakes, floods, whatever it may be. In addition to that, I'd love to be able to have you guys just review all of the um, data and statistics. We had over 265,000 client services um, being provided, not just through Fine Food Bank, but through the agencies that we support and supply food to. Anywhere between 75 to 100 percent of their supply is provided by Fine Food Bank. And then in addition to that, the outreach services that we provide. I know my time is up, but I just want to... 
Oh, because Rachel counts as the second one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. See, I did that on purpose so I could get six minutes instead of three. Fine Food Bank launched about two years ago, Ending Hunger for Today, Tomorrow, and for a Lifetime. So we're going beyond just food distribution now. We're really looking at the root causes of hunger. Workforce development is also one of the things that we're going to be doing at our new um, building. And when you see many of the distribution centers that are the large national chains coming down the 10, we are all of a sudden becoming in the drive markets of those for people to be able to work beyond the um, windmills. And so for us, we have the perfect place to be able to do workforce um, development training on logistics distribution, um, from learning how to use forklifts to pallet jacks to managing inventories and being able to do professional skill sets development for them to be able to have a chance to not just receive food from Fine Food Bank to support them, but also to be able to feed themselves too as well through workforce development. So that's the other meaning behind that building that's being built. Um, we've also invested into our youth. Um, we actually have a youth advisory council now that informs us about childhood hunger. We learn from our youth about what youth are experiencing. About 25% of the people that we feed are youth, so it's important for us to understand it through their eyes. As part of the youth advisory council's commitment to helping other youth in the community, and we have representatives from high schools throughout the Coachella Valley. We have 14 people on the council now. For every year that they serve, they will receive a $2,000 scholarship for continuing education from Fine Food Bank and our wonderful funders that believe in breaking poverty cycles because many of the youth that we have on the council are also experiencing food insecurity. In the city of Indio, this past year, we awarded $12,800 in continuing education scholarships to representatives from Indio that served on that council. And they are now going to uh, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, and UC Davis. So we're very happy to invest in our youth too with regards to ending root uh, causes of hunger as well. So we're going well beyond food now. We're looking at the root causes. And we just appreciate all of the work that um, the city of Indio has supported through these many years. You've seen us grow, you've seen us change, and you've been right there along with us holding our hand. Um, and now even to expanding our facility to really be able to do some magnificent work in ending hunger in this community. So I open up this time for you to ask me any questions in the next 56 seconds. <laughs> yeah. But we're just proud to be the host city for Fine Food Bank. We really appreciate what you're doing there. and. We see the growth. It's it's amazing and it's exponential and it is responding to our community needs. Absolutely. So thank you and thank please you. share our thank yous with the board and everyone and your staff. We will. Thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rachel, there goes your time. <laughs> I know you wanted to talk. Okay, our next request to speak is Robert Kieran. Nothing like going last. <laughs> Madam Mayor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, council members and staff, my name is Robert Kieran, and I am a candidate for Division 4 of the Coachella Valley Water District. I'm a lifelong resident of the Coachella Valley. I graduated from Indio High School in 1977. Remember Rich Ramirez told us there's only two kinds of people in this world. Rajas and those who wish they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, I had, my family came here in 1968. I grew up over in Palm Desert because my dad worked for the phone company and he wasn't too sure hopping over the hill from Hemet if he was going to work in Indio, Palm Springs, or Yucca Valley. That seemed kind of centrally located right there, so that's why we were there. My father was a scoutmaster. I was a boy scout. I went, as I said, to local schools here. Um, I worked just a few hundred yards from here. My first real job, I worked at the Indio Daily News for three years. And uh, the reason I worked there is because in high school, my main dry passion was photography. And they had a job that, to develop film for the reporters and I turned that into a photographer's job. 
And for three years I worked there before realizing that I probably should get an education in this field before I you know, go further in the career. So I went over to College of the Desert and, and there my good friend and mentor, Dr. Rory Wilson, taught me journalism. And from there I went to Cal State University Long Beach and then I came back here to the Coachella Valley. I was a freelance photographer and a photojournalist till the early 90s when another friend of my photography teacher, um, did you know Carl Garshinsky? Uh, just, um, yes, the weatherman. Um, quick side note here, sad news here. Uh, Carl passed in late August, but he uh, basically told my photography teacher, hey, there's a job at the uh, water district, you want to get Bob a call. So I ended up working at the Coachella Valley Water District for 28 years. And in that capacity there, I did a little bit of everything. At the end, I was doing a lot of tours. Uh, even today, I work at uh, Red Sheep. I retired in 2019. Me and my wife, uh, real quick here, she loved working at Fine Food Bank. That was just a passion of hers, just absolutely loved the Fine Food Bank. And I'm looking for other things. I, I lost my wife in uh, February, and so I'm looking to give some service back to the community here. I have a lot of experience in water. I worked uh, for all the general managers except for Lowell Weeks. Missed him by two years, but he ended up becoming a pretty good friend. Um, boy, I thought I was gonna have difficulty filling three minutes and not a problem at all, so. <laughs> um, I've left cards. I'd like to talk with you all, talk about water. Serious subject here in the Coachella Valley and the future is needless to say going to be difficult because it's not just talking about quote drought on the Colorado. It's new times. It's climate change and the world is going to change and I think I can help lead the professional staff in that capacity. So with that thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Have it's you. a pleasure to meet you Mr. Keeney. I have no further requests to speak. Sabdi do you have any? No. Being none, we will close the public comment period and adjourn to our October 1st, what time? 10.30 a.m. at the Taj Mahal, which is at the Riverside County Fair and National Date Festival here in Indio for the state of the city. And I think all my colleagues are going to be there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you'll get to interact with your council members. The youth is invited, too. Just check with city manager, okay? <laughs> Thank you all for being here this evening.